So I guess there's a first time for everything when it comes to these AI-only battles, because two major conflicts broke out about 10 turns before we were supposed to end the campaign. And my theory has always been that if the series stays exciting, I, I need to continue it. I, I don't want to end a series before it, or, or if, if it's still getting exciting. And, and so far, I feel like I've done an okay job when it comes to this campaign, skipping over some of the boring parts. And I really want to make sure that that is a important factor that I continue that on into future AI only campaigns that like because there was a whole like a whole maybe 20 turns that I might maybe not 20 I probably skipped uh, the, in, the over the course of the entire series maybe about 25 turns to 25 to 45 turns and uh, I think that was for the best so anyways uh this is crazy we also just saw Australia declare war in Japan uh, the Zulu got involved too but I mean who cares about what Shock is doing right now uh, we will see because there's actually a force here in Honolulu and remember the Japanese are behind in terms of uh, their naval fleet technology they've got privateers versus all of these submarines which means that the Australians I believe are going to absolutely wreck uh, the Japanese fleet so uh, the two conflicts that broke out in the last video the first one was Siam versus India that wasn't that big you know it was interesting but I was like uh, whatever you know it didn't really it wasn't like a an out of place moment we've seen you know India was I think it was only a matter of time before India, uh, someone declared war on India, especially on a mortal difficulty. Um, the big one was actually in Africa, though, and it actually leads to a lot of different conflicts that could happen. Let's not forget about possibly France going after the Congo or the Ashanti. Uh, this is the big region, but before I look at this, I want to make sure that we're watching what Siam does at all times. He didn't actually attack any of the cities, but he's moving forward. Will Korea join in now? I almost put a guarantee down that I thought Korea was going to go to war with uh, India. I might want to backpedal here and just maybe say that I think Korea is going to go to war. So what I'm going to do to uh, just to kind of talk about like how I'm going to continue this campaign uh, is I will continue it until it doesn't get exciting. Uh, I, I will end it at any moment, but if there are if there are still wars going on, then, then I'm going to keep it up. And then this is the other conflict that broke out. I'm sorry. Uh, let's let's make sure that the British get their opportunity to... Um, oh, actually, uh, they, didn't, they, they didn't take it out completely. But the British uh, are about to destroy Cuba completely after so many other nations have tried. Colombia and Mexico trying... And even Canada. I remember Canada going after Cuba, and they couldn't do it either. Uh, at the end of the day, it was Winston Churchill that got the job done. Let's look at Africa. Huge forces going on here. I think that the Congo's biggest um, ally here will be the Atlantic Ocean. If they can use their fleet to their advantage, that's going to be helpful. But this is going to be a very bloody war for both sides. Just like we've seen every single time these two nations have broken out into conflict, it's always very bloody for both sides. Um, which makes me think that that's why this region will become destabilized. Um, that's, that's why I think either France or the Zulu are going to declare war on one of these two nations. Obviously, France has a bigger picking. The Zulu really needs to hope that the Congo lose a lot of power here. Um, so anyways, like I said, I'm going to pretty much end the campaign whenever it gets boring. Right now, there are, there are wars going on, so I'm not going to end the campaign. But uh, when there are no wars and when there's like a long stretch of peace, maybe about 10 turns of peace, then I'm going to need to stop it. But this could be that like almost fourth wave of huge wars. I don't want to like get anybody too excited um, I feel like I should write like an essay on this or like a book because I, just about Civ 5 AI. But there tends to be usually about three waves. Boom, Sri Lanka has fa uh, fallen. There, there tends to be about three waves of big, big wars throughout um, any sort of campaign like this. Uh, the first always starts around turn 75. And then everything else doesn't really have a defining turn, but... There's, there's about three waves. This seems like a fourth wave of big wars kind of breaking out all throughout the world. Uh, we'll see if that if, if that continues. Um, I do have to definitely say that this is probably because of the moral difficulty. Bam, the UK have been the nation to destroy Cuba. That's incredible. I'm, I'm shocked. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, yeah, so uh, I, I definitely have to... I will I will say for sure because we've played many of the previous campaigns on Emperor difficulty we've never seen this many wars break out this late in the game so I have to I would say um, 
put this entirely on the fact that we're playing on Immortal difficulty, which I love. There are some things that I really don't like about this difficulty, and there's things that I like about it a lot. Um, but it's just interesting. It is interesting that we're seeing this right now. Because an Emperor, they usually just stop. They stop for a very, very long time, which is very strange. This also could not... I mean, maybe I shouldn't say that. It maybe, maybe it is also because of the aggressiveness that I've set up these campaigns to be, with it being Domination only, and with it being uh, aggressive the Aggressive Expansive mod on too. But then again, we played a campaign just like this previously, where it was the Old World series, and we didn't see any wars like this this late in the game. Anyways, come on, Korea, what you gonna do? I I I, I pretty much guaranteed that you were gonna get gonna, gonna get involved in something, but maybe not. Oh, we should keep. We should be watching the Pacific too. I forget about this. The Japanese seem to have lost a, a little bit of their fleet. See, that's what I'm saying. Korea has a, a pretty wide range of wars they can get themselves into. Japan, Siam, or India. I mean, they're the the window's closing to go after India though. But maybe they're not. Maybe they're not worried about that. I've always wanted to see some sort of, some sort of conflict go go down between some sort of uh, Asian continental power versus Japan on the Japanese mainland. Obviously, if that were to occur now, uh, it would be entirely one-sided. Let's go to Africa and make sure that we're watching what's going on here. Seems like the Congo have focused their attempts uh, to go after the Ashanti capital, which is really a smart move. It's a very, very smart move. Maybe the Ottomans could m possibly get involved as well. Uh, Colombia, I think, still deciding. I believe their peace treaty with Argentina is al almost up, so they might want to go after and destroy Argentina. It's only a matter of time before someone does that. I wouldn't be surprised if Australia tries it too. Australia's played a very, very global campaign, and I like it. They've almost policed the Pacific Ocean, sending around their fleet and, and doing, you know, getting themselves involved and actually bringing troops over into wars all throughout the world. Wars, global wars is not a surprise. Um, embargo of Congo. It's actually a surprise when AIs declare a, a war that are that's maybe like halfway across the world and they actually bring the units over. And actually, you know, fight, which is crazy. And Australia, just because of like their natural placement, has had to build a big fleet, which means that they will go and fight worlds or fight wars, you know, around several tiles away from maybe their homeland, which is really cool, I think. Ottomans have denounced Colombia and Australia. Okay. Also, there's a few wars going on against Denmark, but I don't believe anything's come of it. Uh, did Siam already go? Yes, yes he did. Uh, still nothing, no word from Korea. No word from Korea, as well as maybe we will see the British at the last second declare some sort of war. That's also possible. Um, still surprised that the British maybe haven't gotten involved with Denmark, as other nations have seemed to maybe have been upset at the Danish's... Oh, look at Denmark kind of moving through French territory, trying their best at least, probably to uh, to defend this Moroccan capital. Yep, and like we said in the last video, I mean, we knew this war was going to be bloody, and it certainly is. It seems like both sides are losing a lot. They're both around the same technology level, it looks like, uh, both with rocket artillery, both with modern infantry. Maybe I shouldn't say modern infantry, but yeah, uh, they both have bazookas. They're not ahead of anybody. And again, uh, because we will be going past 550, I don't know how for how much longer, but uh, because we will be going past 550, it still is interesting because it's going to give the AI a chance to catch up to France. France is, France is leveled off. They cannot go any further into the tech tree. They've already got 80 technologies. So I believe Korea has already caught up. Um, the UK were close. The UK was close enough last time I checked. So we might see some XCOM units of, the, of their own maybe become uh, a bigger part of so Siam will be or France will be losing power while we go further, which is kind of shocking, to be honest. Um, or not? Sh I'm sorry, it's not shocking, but it's going to make things interesting, to say the least. Uh, but it it all depends, you know. Best thing for Korea, Colombia, or Canada 
would be that these conflicts keep going so that we continue on and we watch. Um, they need, you know, the conflicts in, in the subcontinent of India. And uh, if, if Africa becomes destabilized, then that's a pretty safe bet that, and we don't know yet. We don't know what the Zulu are going to do. We also don't know what the French are going to do. Obviously, if the French, the, if the French go to war, then they're going to only solidify their power and it doesn't matter. But if the French stay stagnant, which is something that we've seen a big, powerful AI do a lot, look at this. I don't think I've ever actually just scrolled. Have I, have I scrolled over France recently? This is incredible. But like I said, the problem is, is that we've seen AI stagnate. And if they stagnate at the end of the game, and somebody does some something huge ooh yeah that's that was something that i should have made a mention of uh i i figured that it was possible canada would attack japan after australia did enough damage i think again it only kind of sweetens the pot for korea i'm actually really excited to check the info addicts and i don't want to check the info addicts until the end of the game until the end of the game pretty much the last video of the series um I just, I don't want to, unless something like crazy happens, which I don't think anything like that crazy will happen, because I'm still expecting to end the, the series before turn 600. It just, it would take, it would take another, you know, I think eight videos to get to turn 600. Unless, of course, I skip videos, uh, I'm sorry, skip turns over the break, which I might, I, I, I might do, but that's still a lot of time to dedicate. And the other campaign is already set up and ready to go, so... Um, the other AI only future, you know, the series after this is already set up and ready to go. So I did want to go into that relatively soon. Um, and I don't even want to make any statements about it. I'm trying my best to not make any statements about it uh, without, you know, I don't want to spoil anybody. Anyways, um, so looks like these two cities will fall within about two turns. I'm guessing about two turns which is going to make the Siamese borders even more interesting. Uh, we also need to kind of look at if Canada is is actually going to do anything about this Japanese war. I think Australia, for the most part, is pretty much done. I don't think they want to do anything else with, with Japan. Um, we'll see if they push forward. They are technically pushing forward, so maybe. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Uh, oh my gosh, Canada's launching XCOM. Look at this XCOM unit on the Japanese mainland like that. Holy crap! Just one dude, too. It is just one dude. It, that pro it, They'll probably launch a few more paratroopers, I'm guessing. Nope. Nope. That one XCOM unit is going... Did this Did this get, just get nuked? No, that's a guided missile, I, I believe. There's been no... Oh, but there are more XCOM units here. Holy crap. I didn't even think about that. We, we haven't really seen... Now that I think about this, we haven't really seen much out of the late game uh, strategies for the AI with XCOM units, like super late game. We've seen late game, but I mean like just as late as possible, like with all the technologies discovered and everything. So this is the most, um, I guess, efficient strategy I think I've seen with a, with an AI using these XCOM units. I didn't even realize that they would use that ability to, to maybe launch a, a, a concept of war like this. Very, very smart. I, I really like that the... Uh, the Canadians are doing this right now. Okay, let's see if uh, these cities fall. Like I said, I, I'm expecting two turns. Yeah, and it looks like it will be in two turns. Both of these will fall. Korea, man, what you gonna do? I'm actually kind of shocked that they haven't gotten themselves in, involved in a war. And that actually might be because of the fear of France. Maybe their fear of France is a little bit too high. Um, something to keep in mind is Canada is that second power. Uh, I'm not saying that just because they maybe take over all of the Japanese mainland, they should win the game. But just saying that's kind of interesting, right? Kind of interesting. Uh, we have a few peace deals between Japan and Mexico and India and Mexico. Let's see if Australia continues to push their squadron to the north. Uh, these diggers will make a significant impact. Especially, they might even sneak in and attack Tokyo here. Nope, they're going to go for Kyoto. Which is kind of smart, but at the same time, there's a lot of artillery units here. Captured by the Congo. So the Congo managed to capture the... Oh wow, was that the Ashanti capital too? Yes, it was. 
I believe that was the Ashanti capital. Wow. Okay, so they took it back, but still. I mean, that city didn't have much population as it was, but that's still really shocking that the Congo are having success here. Seems like the Congo still have more troops that they could use, but they're keeping them behind those front lines just in case maybe someone like France or the Zulu launch a sneak attack, which is very, very possible at this moment here. I think that we're all waiting to see the other powers get involved. Uh, since we saw Canada, uh, we're waiting for Korea. And I should say, I should mention Colombia. Just Colombia has a lot less options. Um, much more, I guess, less less options when it comes to conflicts they can get involved with. Wow. Yep, Canada is going to do this. I Wow. Okay, but will they be able to take over all the cities? That's the next question. See, I do think Canada would be able to launch an interesting assault on uh, Europe against France since they are clearly showing that they can manage um, a, a, a sort of, what, what's the word, different invasion, uh, a different sort of land invasion, a continental invasion. I don't know what the word is, but they're, they're capable of launching an assault on uh, a landmass besides their own. There you go. That's exactly what I mean. Uh, so this next city will fall and India will be eliminated from the game. We will probably see at some point Argentina be destroyed by the Colombians, I think. And we really will be down to only a handful of sieves. Maybe Mexico might also... Or maybe the Canadians will launch an attack on Mexico. That's another pe question that we all need to pose to ourselves. Or I guess a question that we need to think about. That was just, I don't know, pose to ourselves is a weird way to, to put it. Um, oh, they lost their capital again. Uh, and they can't take it back this time. Okay, let's watch the Canadians in, in Japan. Uh, Canada has denounced Korea. Ooh. Ooh. All right. And Australia is pretty much left. They're, they're not going to do anything about this war. That's unfortunate. But um, So what do we say? What will we say if Canada takes over all of the Japanese mainland, all four cities here? And then if they were to attack, maybe another b lister sieve. I don't know if it's safe to say that, safe to call, you know, Mexico and, and Japan b listers. I would say maybe a little bit lower than that. But And then let's just say they, they take over all the four Japanese cities and they take all three Mexican cities. What happens then? Uh, still a pretty dominant victory here by Napoleon. Um, I think it's safe to say that they're going to need to do a little bit more than just that. Obviously, they're, they're, they'd have to declare that war in Mexico. I think the only way... I mean, it, it would have to be... They, they would have to do something so entertaining. Remember, this is like really the only thing Canada has done. Canada hasn't done anything in the entire campaign. The only thing I could think of is if Canada declares war on Korea. And if they win that war um, in some sort of significant way, then maybe it's a possibility. But uh, this is, again, another kind of series of firsts. Bam, India has been destroyed. Siam looking very powerful. Maybe even a top six sieve. I would definitely say they're top six. Maybe even ahead of Australia at this point, since Australia hasn't really done much. Uh, but anyways, guys, I'm going to have to end it right there. Korea still not getting involved. Korea and France. While Canada um, really tries some late game push right now. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.